Hello everyone. Today we will be showing you how to access TestNet. First, I will be showing you how to access the network as a full node. Then, we're going to take a look at the wallet and then the block explorer and how to use them to become a validator. We have posted all the instructions in textual form on our Medium page. You can also find it on the official Bosagora repository at github.com slash bosagora slash agora. As I mentioned earlier, there are two modes in which Agora can run, full node or validator. The easiest way to access testnet is to run a full node, and that's what we're going to be looking at first. The system requirements of Agora are pretty low, as you can see here, and any consumer and computer should be able to run it without a hitch. There are three ways you can run Agora, either via the Docker image, our native binaries for Ubuntu 2004, or Mac OS 11 and above. For this video, we're going to focus on Docker image, but instructions for other methods are available on the written instructions. If you have Linux, the steps should be exactly the same. If you have Windows, make sure to get WSL set up first, as it is required for Docker to work, and make sure you have Docker installed. First, we're going to open a terminal. In order to download the Docker image, we will type docker pool bosagora slash agora. This will pull the latest version. As we will update agora during the test period, you might have to rerun this command in the future. Once the image is downloaded, you can run a full node by clicking docker run bosagora slash agora dash dash testnet. After a short period, the node will start downloading all the blocks from the network. This step usually takes a while, so I will be proceeding on to the next step. You can stop a node by pressing Ctrl C. Next, we're going to take a look at the Block Explorer. The Block Explorer is located at testnet.boascan.io. At the top, you can see some general information about the state of the chain, the current block height, number of frozen coins, active validators, etc. Below, you will find the latest blocks listed in descending order, as well as the latest received transactions. These transactions have been seen by a validator, but might not have been externalized yet. If we click on the latest block, we will get more detail about said block. First, you will see a summary. Then below it, you can see which validators participated in its creation. And finally, the details of those transactions. If we click on the hash listed for a transaction, we can get more details on the transaction itself. Our chain uses a UTXO model, so we have inputs and outputs. Next, we're going to take a look at the wallet, which is located at testnet.boawallet.io. First, we need to accept the terms of service, then choose which language to use. As you don't have a key yet, click on the Create button to get one automatically generated for you. Make sure to copy both the secret key and the public key somewhere as you will need them later. The secret key controls your funds and shouldn't be shared with anyone. But make sure you don't lose it or your funds will be unrecoverable. To log in, use the secret key. As you can see, the screen is empty now because we don't have any funds yet. To get funds on testnet, head over to faucet.bosagora.io, paste your public key in the text box, and send test BOA. It will send you 100 coins. If we head over to the Block Explorer, we should see the transactions appearing here. By clicking on it, we can see that indeed there are 100 coins output for our public key. When a block includes it, it will be in our wallet as well. Next, we want to run a validator. First, we need a frozen stake. To do so, head back to faucet, pass your key, and then this time select create validator stake. Like previously, you will see the transaction appearing on the block explorer soon after clicking the button with an output of 40,000. Enrolling as a validator is a little bit more complicated than running a full node. The setup we saw earlier does not save anything permanently. 
So when you restart your node, you will need to re-download the chain, which is inconvenient. First, create a directory dedicated to Agora and navigate it to your terminal. Here, I'm going to use a directory on my desktop. The next step is to synchronize your validator so that it can enroll at the right height. Start your full node with the command you see on the screen. You can also copy and paste it from the written instructions I mentioned earlier. Once the synchronization is finished, stop your node. You will see a new directory in your folder, which contains all the data your node downloaded. For the next step, we need a configuration file. The easiest way is to use the sample one provided on GitHub. Go to github.com slash bosagora slash agora. Then under devel testnet, you will see a file named config.yaml. Copy it into your local folder. The last thing you should do is add those lines to your config file. It will tell your node to act as a validator and what key to use. As validators need to be publicly reachable, you need to provide an address that will be registered for other nodes to contact you. It can be an IP address or a domain main like here. Make sure you specify the Agora prefix, and if you use a different port of that of the default one, 2826, provide it as well. Once this is done, you can start your validator with this command. If you have any issues, please refer to the written instructions, which also show how other approaches can work. And if you find a bug, please report it on GitHub. If you have any questions, there is a discussion tab on our GitHub where you can contact the development team. I hope this video has helped you understand and experience CoinNet test version. We look forward to your participation and help to make a better network. Thank you.